Hi guys, so this video is all about helping you to sound super authentic in a bebop or bop way by using and practicing chromatic enclosures. By targeting chord notes on beat one and beat three using chromatic enclosures, we can really gauge our practice, gauge our development, gauge our progress and get this super authentic jazz vocabulary into our own playing. So I'm going to share with you a way that I have practiced chromatic enclosures in the past and that involves just practicing within a key center. So for today's lesson I'm going to be looking at C major which is of course concert B flat. So as we go up through the scale on C major of course the chord changes like so. We've got C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G7, a minor 7, B minor 7 flat 5, and then of course back to the C major 7. So by practicing these chords using chromatic enclosures, we can really develop that ear finger coordination, a great knowledge of the chords, and also a great way to get through unfamiliar jazz standards, or say we're sitting in a big band and we suddenly get a, a chart that we're not familiar with, then having this vocabulary at our disposal can help us sound fantastic. So I'm going to quickly share with you the PDF resource. Of course, as always, the PDF resource is going to get sent to my Patreon members and my coaching program members. So the first chord is C major 7, which would be the C, the E, the G, and the B. Okay, and if I chromatically enclose those chordal notes, it can sound very, very authentic, especially at the quicker tempos. Now, I'm not going to go through all of them because you can just see what I've done and I've explained what I've done. But let's just look at the D minor 7. Again, the chord notes D, F, A, C. Okay, so now let's look at a way that we can apply those chromatic enclosures to some jazz standards. So I've chosen four jazz standards, Autumn Leaves, Blue Bossa, All the Things You Are, and There Will Never Be Another You. I've just taken the four measures, first four measures of each tune. And so here we go with Autumn Leaves, and we're going to listen to an exercise I've just created, trying to chromatically enclose chordal notes. Now, of course, you can use any of the chordal notes and experiment. And just the more you do that, the more you get that chromatic enclosure vocabulary into your fingers. And also, the more secure you'll be with your knowledge of those chord changes. OK, let's now have a listen to how that sounds on Blue Bossa. Okay, and here we go with all the things you are. And lastly, for this demo, let's look at the first four measures of There Will Never Be Another You. So if you're finding these PDF resources helpful, just remember they don't only come in B-flat, they also come in concert pitch, E-flat and bass clef too. And again, they're going to get sent to my Patreon and coaching program members. Links in the description. Okay, so not long ago, I did 
a video called Bebop Lines, the easy way. Here it is, somewhere above my head. If you click that, you can go and watch it. Then come back to this, and then what you'll see is now applying using the type of language that we used in that video, but also really concentrating on the chromatic enclosure. So using the same tunes, here we go with Autumn Leaves. Here we go with Blue Bossa. And here we go with All The Things You Are. And I've also created a faster tempo version just to show you how effective they can sound at that quicker tempo. And lastly, again, here we go with There Will Never Be Another You. And again, at the faster tempo, just to show you how hard bop, bebop like they sound. So if you've been watching my videos for a while, you can see, hopefully see, that I've taken the vocabulary of my favourite players, the players that really influenced me, people like Blue Mitchell, Clifford Brown, Tom Harrell, Louis Armstrong, Chet Baker, many, many others as well. And rather than remembering big long licks where actually if, the, if there is a lick with achromatic enclosure in it, it is only useful for that, say it's enclosing a B, but it's only useful for that B. So why not actually learn chromatic enclosures and we can use that vocabulary and apply it on any chord on any jazz standard. And the same with all of the other types of vocabulary that we will be discussing in future lessons. And of course, that is in the video, Bebop Lines, The Easy Way. So I hope you got a lot from this video. Lots of practice required. If you've never come across chromatic enclosures, but it doesn't take long. If you practice in a targeted, laser-focused way and just concentrate maybe on the C chord until you get them into your fingers and then try the D minor chord until you get them into your fingers and slowly, slowly build it up. Another way to do it is to practice on maybe an easy jazz standard, something like When the Saints. <laughs> Targeting the chord notes with chromatic enclosures or scale fragments, that forward motion using approach notes, it helps us to sound super melodic. It's exactly the way that I've practiced, put this thing together for myself, and it's really, really helped me take my playing forward. And I actually feel like I'm improvising all the time rather than trying to remember licks, which really I've never been able to do. Okay, guys, hope you've enjoyed the video. Remember to like, remember to comment, remember to subscribe, and I'll see you soon for the next video. Bye for now.